Do you enjoy learning with Vival? Make your experience even more exciting by becoming a Vival Group fan. Exclusive perks await fan subscribers. Get access to exclusive webinars. Enjoy free teaching resources. Check out exclusive content. Get discounts on Vival products. All of these for only 55 pesos a month. Exciting, right? Subscribe as a fan now. Here's how. Visit, click, follow. First, visit Vival Group's Facebook page. Then, click Become a Supporter to purchase a monthly subscription. Lastly, follow the prompts that appear on your screen. But don't confuse this for top fan. Nah, ah, it's a different thing. You need to follow the easy steps. Visit, click, follow. Be a Vival Group fan and enjoy exciting perks today. Good day, Kavibao! And welcome to our Learn at Home Learning Session. For the discussion today, the topic will be on All Minds Matter, Seeking Science, Accentuating Awareness, and Stopping Sigma. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. Make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.revalgroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Share the video using hashtag LearnAsOnePH as our official hashtag to our Vibal webinars. Experience learning. To Vibal. And now, to proceed with our webinar this evening, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker today. Ms. Lorraine Joyce M. Del Rosario is a former teacher at the University of Santo Tomas Senior High School and instructor at the University of Santo Tomas. She has taught fields of science and practical research. With a background in journalism and communication in high school, she has also been appointed as the moderator of La Stampa, the official publication of the UST SHS, and as an e-learning specialist and educational technology coordinator. She was a member of the UST SHS executive committee and many other work and academic related societies and organizations in the biological field. Apart from graduating as valedictorian in the special program in journalism in high school, Ms. Del Rosario earned a BS Biology degree from the University of the Philippines, Baguio, in 2017, supported by a DOST scholarship. Her undergraduate thesis with her partner and advisor was awarded as one of the two best paper presentations in the third Philippine Solid and Hazardous Waste Management Conference. She's currently pursuing her Master of Art of Master of Science degree in Biology at UP Diliman, granted with UST ASTHRDP scholarship. Her current field of interest is in genetics, particularly in the study of DNA in molecular phylogenetics. Aside from being an educator and a graduate student, Ms. Del Rosario spends her time writing, tutoring English online, accepting speaking and hosting engagements, and traveling as a hobby prior to the pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Ms. Lorraine Joyce M. Del Rosario. Hello, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, ma'am for the introduction. I hope everyone could see my screen and I hope that we are all ready to have our Learn at Home session for tonight. Before we formally begin, I just want everyone to stop for a while, stop whatever you are doing, and I want you to take a deep breath. I may not see you all doing it, but I believe in you. And I believe that this is really essential. 
So inhale, exhale. Okay, great. I think we all needed that, right? And I hope that short exercise helped us to clear our minds even just a little bit. And of course, to prepare us for our topic presentation tonight. As we all know, unarguably, one of the most complicated thing in this universe is the human mind. Oftentimes, it gets really crowded in there as thoughts overflow uncontrollably. And nothing in this world can torment you as much as your own thoughts. So indeed, it is very powerful. And in these times, you know, you just want to let everything fleet away. Imagine you are working on a messy desk or you're living in, an, in a disordered or disorganized room. You know, it just seems like you cannot function efficiently or properly. Well, for most of us. The mind is always at work. And it is not always positive or bright ideas that arise. These negatives are normal. Although the problem is, it is a challenge to handle them. As we live our lives every day, it becomes one of a point of our weakness. But hey, don't worry. It is not just you. All of us, we have our thoughts, we have our insecurities, we have our own problems. You know, you might wonder at some point today, what's going on in another, in another person's mind? You may compliment someone's great mind or say they are out of their mind. You may even try to expand or free your own mind. That is why all minds matter. So join me tonight in a Learn at Home presentation on All Minds Matter, Seeking Science, Accentuating Awareness, and Stopping the Stigma. Here is the outline of this presentation. So first, we will tackle about the science of the mind. And then we will be raising awareness um, and introduce information on how to stop or remove the stigma associated with it. And finally, we end with the summary conclusion and key takeaways. The objectives for this topic is to demonstrate the science behind the mind and how it differs with the brain. And we, have, we will elaborate the importance of mental health. We will raise awareness on the signs, symptoms, and issues, define the stigma associated with mental health in general, introduce ways on how to cope with mental health problems, illnesses, and disorders, and enumerate methods of being mentally fit even amidst the pandemic. So without further ado, let's begin with our first topic. And this is the science of the mind. Let us seek an understanding of science in the study of our mind. You know, humans are widely assumed to be the most intelligent species on earth due to our intricate civilizations and innovative behaviors. And we are high on the ladder of evolution. So in this presentation, despite that the title of the presentation states all minds, we will be focusing on all human minds. The idea that our brains are like giant supercomputers orchestrating and determining everything we do has gained ground in the recent years. So to have ideas that a short time ago would have been regarded as science fiction, like downloading the internet directly to our brains or creating a new kind of human, you know, one with enhanced cognitive powers or abilities. But the problem with having a dualistic view of the brain and its relationship to the physical body and the physical world is that it makes us see ourselves as unnaturally self-contained, both as minds and as autonomous agents. So we view ourselves as things that operate from within, so we're less sensitive to the things that influence us on the outside. And the difficulty in linking the human mind and behavior on, the one, on one hand and the brain on the other is noted. 
or rooted, ironically enough, in the way that he, the human brain itself works. So human brain categorized continuously, effortlessly, and relentlessly. Categorization plays a fundamental role in every human activity, including science. But what is mind? No, you know, defining this concept is surprisingly sl a slippery task. The mind is the seat of consciousness, as we may have learned in our philosophy, the essence of our being. And without a mind, we cannot be considered meaningfully alive. But what exactly and where precisely is it? It is very complicated. And if we are to compare brain versus mind, Traditionally, scientists have tried to define the mind as the product of brain activity. And the brain is a physical substance. The mind is a conscious product of those firing neurons, according to the classic argument. But growing evidence shows that the mind goes far beyond the physical workings of your brain. But mind is associated with the brain, and the two terms are often used interchangeably. Maybe we can... Uh, compare it. It can be likened to a computer software. Brain is the hardware, the physical organ that weighs approximately 2% of the human body, whereas mind is the software or the metaphysical component, and it is one of the faculty of the soul. And for a tabular comparison, so brain is a physical thing, mind is considered mental. Brain is composed of nerve cells, blood vessels, and it can be touched, whereas the mind cannot be touched. Brain has definite shape and structure, and it coordinates movements, feelings, and different functions of the body, whereas the mind cannot. The mind simply refers to the person's conscience, understanding, and thought process. So the popular concept of science is modeled upon physical sciences, which rely exclusively on objective data. So recent interest in studying anomalous phenomena, mind, consciousness, and the like has facilitated the emergence of investigative techniques to study diverse subjective data. So the structured brain carries out functions like thinking, emotions, problem solving, some total of a person's personality, including the moral standards, language, hearing, vision, the senses, motor activities, balance, coordinations, etc. All these functions can be subsumed under a broad category of functions called the mind. So brain is a structure, mind is a collection of its function. Brain and mind, though connected concepts, are not synonymous and they should not be used interchangeably. And now let's proceed to mental health. What is mental health? It includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel, and act. And it also helps determine how we handle stress, relate to others, and make choices. So it is very important at every stage of life. However, you know, if we encounter problem, health problem that affects how a person thinks behaves and interacts with others, that is now what we call as the mental illness. Mental illness is a group of illnesses that are often diagnosed through standard criteria. And the term mental disorder refers to the same health criteria. You know, there are many people suffer suffering mental illness, and some of them do not even, even know that they are suffering such condition. So mental illness, that's the condition that really affects how we think, how we feel, our mood, and our behavior. And this can include but are not limited to depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia. I'm very sure you're familiar with these terms. And mental health, that's the overall emotional, psychological, and social well-being. Affecting how we think, feel, and act. Mental health has a strong impact. impact on the way we interact with others, handle problems, and make decisions. So that's it for the science of the mind as an introduction to accentuating awareness or raising awareness.
you know, the mind is actually very colorful and very powerful, yet dangerous when not I'm very sorry, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen back. I'm very sorry for the technical difficulties. The, my Zoom uh, application suddenly shut down. But anyway, I'm, I'm back. So let's begin. Uh, sorry, let's continue from where we left. As I was saying, the mind is actually very colorful and very powerful, yet dangerous when not handled properly. As there is a lot going on in there, it is important to raise awareness. Because there are statistics, you know, like 60% of adults with mental health illness receive no mental health services. And about two thirds of children with a diagnosable mental illness have also not received any treatment. Therefore, mental health awareness is just as important as taking care of our physical health. And these terms right here are commonly associated with mental health problems. And we always need to take note or observe this to prevent further damage. So here are the factors affecting the mental health. So we have, over the course of your life, you know, if you experience mental health problems, your thinking, mood, and behavior could be affected. And many factors contribute to it, such as biological factors, genes or brain chemistry, life experiences, trauma, abuse, family history of mental health problems, childhood abuse, trauma, or neglect, social isolation, loneliness, experiencing discrimination and stigma, social disadvantage, poverty, debt, bereavement, severe or long-term stress, or incidents, accidents, which you have experienced, and a whole lot more. You know, all the lifestyle factors, including work, diet, drugs, and lack of sleep can also affect your mental health. If you experience a mental health problem, there are usually other factors as well. 
and mental health problems are common, but help is available. So we should not neglect early symptoms of mental health illnesses. You know, like for example, when your child knows someone who is silently suffering from mental illness, they tend to show some signs that you must catch to heal them on time. So you can see how dangerous the situation becomes when a person grows up with mental issues. So for this reason, you must learn about all the factors and signs that may lead to mental disease in uh, the people whom you know, such as feeling sad, concentration problems, suicidal thinking, extreme mood changes, paranoia, sleeping problems, excessive use of alcohol or drugs, inability to cope with stress. And it, was all, it can also be summarized into these five signs. If there are some, you notice some personality change or someone feeling agitated, withdrawn, or he or she suddenly tend to have poor self-care already or becoming hopeless. So these are signs that we must watch out so that we will know how to help other people or if we ourselves are also the ones experiencing this. So there are many different signs and symptoms. And uh, let me introduce to you the term anosognosia. So when someone rejects a diagnosis of mental illness, it's tempting to say that he is in denial. But someone with acute mental illness may not be thinking clearly enough to consciously choose denial. So they may instead be experiencing lack of insight or lack of awareness. So the formal medical term for that is an anosognosia. So from the Greek meaning to know, to not know a disease. So when we talk about anosognosia in mental illness, we mean that someone is unaware of their own mental health condition or that they cannot perceive their condition accurately. So it is a common symptom of certain mental illnesses and perhaps the most difficult to understand for those who have never experienced it. So you know, there is no health without mental health. And mental health awareness increases the chances for early intervention, which can result in a fast recovery. So the more the education, the more that we become aware and we have better understanding of it, the higher the chance for intervention. But of course, many efforts to promote good mental health should be introduced. And just as individuals are encouraged to take care of our physical health, like improving our eating and exercise habits. So there are also many programs that teach mindfulness, stress reduction techniques, and gratitude. So it's as essential as our physical health. So mental health awareness should not only be for a day or two. We must be informed. And community awareness for mental health reduces the stigma associated with it. How about now? You know, we are still currently experiencing our, our COVID situation. I'm sure many of us have been challenged. Our mental health have been challenged, not only all other aspects. So mental health repercussions regarding what is happening during this day will really be a problem in general. So is it compassion fatigue, fatigue or burnout that we are experiencing? Let me, uh, uh, let me define these two terms. So when you say burnout, this is an occupation by excessive and prolonged stress. And when we say compassion and fatigue, this is also called vicarious traumatization or secondary traumatization. It's the emotional restraint of exposure to working with those suffering from the consequences of traumatic events. So this is the negative cause of caring. So to be able to, to, be able to cope during this COVID-19 situation, we must maintain a daily routine. Yet it's vital that we establish and maintain a daily routine that would bring rhythm and a sense of normalcy to our lives. And we must maintain engagement and connectivity, right? Which transcends physical closeness. We have to use all the things that we have for social networks to stay connected. And you may have read this before, but it bears repeating self-care for you and your family. So have some proper sleep, exercise, nutrition habits. You know, we know stress suppresses the immune system. So we have to do self-care, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. 
And fourth, or lastly, you know, explore a talent or hobby that you might have not done. So this is the time to cultivate neglected or unknown aspects of ourselves. You know, perhaps you have a talent in cooking or in baking or in DIY. I'm sure there are so many groups right now in our social media, which helps us expose to this um, particular hobbies or interests and which help us to meet other people who are also inclined in the same interests. So go on, you know, don't be afraid to try out something new. It, it is re really great with, for our mental health. Mind mapping could also be a very um, helpful technique. It's the visual technique, technique of representing complex ideas. But uh, if you're the kind of person who, who does journaling, this is also effective. You can use it to create mind maps, boosting your productivity, creativity, and memory. You know, you know, you can write it down, write your ideas, draw a bubble with the central idea or big idea in the middle of the sheet, then branch out each topic with new bubbles from the central theme, and then connect each subtopic to the central theme, and then add new ideas as it branches and branches. So just repeat it, and then it will help to also organize your thoughts. And we have the acronym BASIS, so this could also be um important and helpful when you're taking care of your mental health so it's body so take care of the body achieve give your brain a boost do something which will give you self-fulfillment connect that's very important even if during this pandemic we cannot connect physically but at least we are thankful with our technology and enjoy enjoy life seize the day seize the moment do not worry right because worrying will steal your present moment and then you can also step back uh, you know, try to relieve some moments which have nostalgic moments. It's nice to recall some good memories. You know, it's uh, also good for our mental health. Take a breath, take a deep breath and consider bigger pictures. And finally, I'll, we, we still have summer in conclusion later, but our last topic is on stopping the stigma. So we all know that there is a stigma associated with mental health as this. Someone or somebody might be afraid to speak out because he or she might be judged by other people, sad to say, right? So mental health stigma hasn't gone away, it's still here. The problems surrounding mental health stigma are nuanced and far reaching and really need to get grips with the effect that each different type can have. So mental health is this, we are being judged by a lot of people right? Um, all of these actives associated to mental health or mental health illness becomes very negative in the view of other people and we are affected. So mental health sounds like, you know, you're faking it or, uh, you know, maybe you just need some attention, something like that. Stigma refers to the perception that a certain attribute makes the person unacceptably different from others, leading to prejudice and discrimination against them. So this is one very big problem in mental health. And, you know, people with, with mental health problems aren't really scary. And if, if ever you feel like you have, you're facing mental health problem, it will really be helpful to just, you know, face it and speak out. You know, someone you know has a mental health problem. They just don't know how to tell you. Mental illness is nothing to be ashamed of, but stigma and bias shame us all, according to the famous Bill Clinton. So stigmas associated with mental issues come from misguided views that these individuals are different from everyone else. And early beliefs about what causes mental health include, you know, possession, which caution, and discrimination and stigma can be categorized there is public stigma which involves the negative or discriminatory attitudes that others have a mental illness uh, there's also self stigma refers to the negative attitudes including internalized people with mental illness have about their own condition and there's institutional stigma which is more involves government and private organizations that intentionally or unintentionally limit opportunities for people with mental health or mental health problems. And there's label 
avoidance, wherein individuals refuse or decline to engage in services for fear of being labeled or stereotyped. So stigma by itself has to be recognized as a symptom of mental disorder, not only impact, because more than 60% of people won't seek the help they need because of stigma. But now I tell you, it's okay, all right? It's okay not to be okay. And I'm sure if you have seen this uh, Korean drama, it's okay not to be okay. Uh, they have introduced there this uh, method, butterfly hog. That's why I also have butterfly on my title page. So the, the, the butterfly hog is a self-soothing method. So it's like you're comforting yourself. You're just tapping yourself, you know, sit or stand in a comfortable position, cross both arms in front of your chest and place each hand on your upper arms. So begin gently tapping on each hand one at a time. And then practice relaxed breathing while you're doing it. And you may be surprised to discover you are feeling calm. But if your level of anxiety under the change at all, give yourself some more time with a butterfly hug and see what happens. Yeah, I hope this could, you know, you, you can remember about this if ever you're feeling some anxiety attack or stress, you feel help, you feel something, you know, uh, it's okay not to be okay. You know, we really have to debunk the myths already. You know, people with mental illness, all mental illnesses, it can be treated. Some cannot be cured, but they can be managed so that individuals can live a full and productive life. So we must break the stigma. You know, we can talk openly about mental health. Let's educate ourselves and others about mental health. Let's be conscious also of our language when others seek for our help in regard to mental health. Let's be conscious because any mistake of our words can really affect them. So let's, let's be empathetic and compassionate for those living with mental illnesses and stand up against the way those living with mental illnesses are portrayed in the media. So be an advocate for mental health reform. You know, mental health stigmas will not simply go away on their own, but we need to work together. A community of advocates can change the way how mental illness is originally perceived in the society. So, you know, don't be afraid to speak out because there are people who are willing to listen. So we must break the stigma, smile, talk, imagine, get help, move, and acceptance. It's also very important. Um, we're running out of time, so let's proceed with our summary, summary conclusion and some key takeaways. Let me summarize and conclude with these 10 facts about mental health. So we first two facts, there is really a statistics you know, on how mental health affects every person in the world, no matter what your age is. About 800,000 people commit suicide every year because of mental health problems. And more natural disasters also have large impacts on our mental health and well-being. Mental disorders are considered important risk factors for other illnesses as well as well as unintentional and intentional injury. That's what we really should avoid. Fact six, there is stigma and discrimination against patients and families. But, you know, by working together, we can break this stigma. Fact seven is on the violation of human rights of people affected by mental illness is re routinely reported in most countries. So that's why still a lot of people are afraid to ask for help. And now, number eight, globally, there is huge inequity in the distribution of skilled human resources for mental health. So that's why, yeah, probably they're also, you know, we need, I hope we can further educate ourselves so that we can be instrument to others. And these are f uh, five key barriers to increase the availability of mental health services. We need to break these barriers. And for fact then, of course, as we all join together in a community, we also need you know, some resources. Financial resources are needed to increase services which are relatively modest, especially in our society today. So it's okay to ask for help and keep ourselves updated. Let's continue to raise awareness. And one means is to keep ourselves informed. That's why here also at Vival, we continue to promote learning 
and informing wherever we are as it has also become it has also became possible by means of learn at home so we have different learn at home kits to help and guide us in learning and in teaching as well so despite the challenges that we are facing especially that we still have the covid-19 pandemic when faced with a difficult situation focus on what you can change accept matters that are beyond your control you know stop sulking over things we cannot control and always strive to live by your values so give yourself the same care and attention that you also give to others and watch yourself bloom do activities one thing at a time you know healing takes time and asking for help is a courageous step and uh, Finally, a key takeaway, according to Dr. Stephen R. Covey, all things are created twice, first in the mind and then in the real world. So physical creations follow mental ones, just like homes are built according to blueprints. So to make your deepest desires a reality, whatever you are facing, you first need to see and understand what those desires are. So in short, to begin with the end in mind is to visualize your life, career, or a specific project the way that you want it to end up being before you actually begin pursuing it. When you make this conscious effort, you take much greater control over your life and circumstances. That is all for our presentation for tonight. Thank you very much for listening, everyone, and I hope that we will all keep our minds healthy. And here are my references. Thank you very much and a pleasant evening to all. Thank you very much, ma'am. Do you have any last reminders to our viewers for today? Yes, ma'am. I hope that we all um, gathered some information in our short presentation for tonight. I'm sorry for the technical problem a while ago. But mental health is just as important as our physical health or our health in general. And this is one thing which is often neglected in our society. There's a stigma associated with it. But as mentioned in my presentation, it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to ask for help. So, and as well, as individuals, I hope we can all strive to keep ourselves aware also, informed and updated in regard to uh, mental health issues. Uh, that's, that will be all and let's keep our minds healthy. Thank you very much, Vibal, for another opportunity to speak out on this very important topic. Thank you, Ms. Jillian. There we have it. In behalf of Ibal Group Incorporated, I would like to thank our speaker for tonight for this very eye-opening and insightful learning session. It is an honor to have you with us today, ma'am. And to all our Kavibal viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to our daily learning session. Don't forget to register to get your e-certificate of participation. The link is in the caption of this webinar. We also encourage you to subscribe and watch on our official Vival Facebook and YouTube channel. Muli, maraming salamat at magandang araw sa ating lahat.